Hi guys, welcome to Car Pervert. I'm Johnny Smith and I'm a YouTuber. Yeah, these are very popular with the YouTube fraternity. What is that? It's an SUV. What's the most popular genre of car in the world at the moment? It's the SUV. What's my least favorite car genre? The SUV. This film is all about the Aston Martin DBX, the first SUV for Aston Martin. Some of you might know that I'm not a massive fan of SUVs and that's why I'm not going to be doing this review. Someone else is. This woman. She's my wife. Mrs Smith. I'll stop talking now. So the DBX, as I said, is the first SUV for Aston. It's a really critical car for Aston. They've amazingly made it quite distinctly Aston-y, but as an SUV, it's a bit of a weird one, because I mean, they have made a four-door before, the Rapide, but that's a low down, you know, sports saloon. This is, you know, quite high. Darling, I didn't think you were meant to be reviewing this car. All right. What do, you, what do you think of the front end? Would well, you want to do this bit with me, obviously, because you I can't, I can't. <laughs> Come on, we'll do this together. I can't resist. And then you can back off. <laughs> um, front end. Front end. I do like the front end, actually, I have to say. Yeah. It was a weird car when it arrived, because I was here and you weren't when it arrived. Yeah. And I, I think the front looks good. <sighs> I think they're considering, because a lot of, compare it to what some of its um, rivals, for example, the Bentley Bentayga, it's a very, very ugly car. It's a very well-made car, but damn, it's ugly. Uh, yeah, I don't like these. I don't understand what, so what are these bits for here? Well, the air, is that aerodynamics? No, the, the intakes, the air intakes for, 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 for cold air. Right. Or for letting hot air but why out. Is that, why have they got the metal bits I here, think though? that's just a metal I mean, fin, that... which will probably be part of the detailing on the side here. Right. Aston's have had a lot of... It kind of looks like it's got a nose piercing or something, doesn't it? Like a weird... That's a bit of a sort of free party nose piercing. Yeah, gangster nose piercing. I mean, it's quite high. I guess it is. It's an SUV. It's high, yeah. So I'm not used to seeing an Aston this high. No. Um, and I think if you didn't look at the back, it would be... In, it, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely interesting. And then the back's slightly cut off. We'll, we'll come to the back in a minute because it is, it is unusual. Sorry, I'm not doing this right, am I? The, the old grille is, is unmistakable. Uh, you might know it from Mondeo's. Sorry, DB2, which was the first Aston Martin to see it. And it's been on Aston's for decades and decades and decades. Ford kind of stole it. Um, but I actually think they've done a good job. Yeah, it's, it the, looks... The problem for me always, and I'll probably say it again, is that SUVs are always a compromise. I love the fact that, look, We've both got notebooks. In the sky fall, in the tumble, in the tumble, in the tumble, in the sky fall. Oh, I was going to say, don't talk to the camera with your, with your back. You've got to face the camera with your front. It's crying out loud. It's true. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's one of the few things I've learned in the industry. Okay. Anyway, side profile. Side profile. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? It is, but I don't like these. Never have done. Oh, the Aston. Don't like the pushy things. <laughs> I don't so you, like kind you of have not to push. knowing. Yeah, it's fiddly. And obviously, and I'm, you know, I am a woman. And, he, you know, if you've got like male sausage fingers, which I reckon a lot of guys are going to have that drives the, drive this car. Are you saying that this is a bit of a gammon car? No, because no. they won't be able to bloody get in. This is not a gammon car. Okay. And I'll come on to that. It's definitely not a gammon car because the seat things, the adjustable seat things, are like like skittles. I mean, this is over five metres long, the DBX. It's a big car. They're all big, all, all of its competitor cars, but it's not the smallest in its group. No. It's quite a sleek thing. Obviously, they've made a point of making it uh, kind of swoopy and you've got this really sharp crease that I quite like, actually. It's weird with me because I don't like SUVs because I don't really see the point. They don't do anything really, really well. And if you're buying a car for this sort of money, I would just buy 
a, a daily sort of family vehicle and I a know, sports you car. Hate them. And that's the bit I don't get. I'm a massive fan of You Only Live Twice as the song, but not the film. You only live twice, or so they say. I think no. you say it in a sort of broad Cornish. Well, the worst <laughs> one is definitely um, the um, Jack White one, isn't it? Yeah, that didn't and work. And Alicia Keys. Was it Jack White and Alicia yeah, Keys? Yeah, but Jack, he ruined it for Alicia. Yeah. Because Alicia on her own would have been amazing. Yeah, he did. And he... he's just trashed it. She's but never going to come back. Why did they do it together? I don't know. I don't even think they're mates. Yeah, it was I bet a forced... they've not even seen each other since. It was a forced. It was a forced relationship. It was a forced wasn't relationship. That's, well, just, that's a marketing person just gone awry. You can't look at an Aston Martin without talking about Bond. You can't. Well, I could. Well, because so much of Aston's brand is built on the Bond connection. Yeah. If the Bond connection's dead to you, I think three quarters of the people are out. It's so important to Aston. This is basically. So what? So if Aston doesn't appear in any more Bonds? I think it would. Just it would it. hurt Aston so. Is terribly. this in the new Bond? No, I don't think it is. Why am I even still talking to you? And you're not even meant to be on camera. This is James Bond. If he like accidentally got a woman pregnant. Oh no! I've got to buy a family thing. He is. He's got a kid in the new Bond. He have. Bond. Apparently. Bond spreads his seed. This Bond is like Bond. Is that, do you know that's what happens or you just made that up? I've just made that you up. You just made that up, okay. Um, so the back of the car is hindered, in my personal opinion, by Well, that's not, the, that. the, do, the dog's dick tow bar is optional. I like the fact that you can option it as uh, with the tow bar, with the bar. I'm bored now. That is a good boot. That is a big boot, that actually. That is a good boot. Normally, SUVs are a massive car externally and they're sort of like a reverse TARDIS. You get inside and they're disappointing amount well, of Well, I'll space. be honest, and based on what it looks like from the outside, I didn't think the boot would be as tall as it is. Yeah. You don't buy an SUV this size if you're unless just you're a single person, unless you're... I mean, you can, it's not illegal, but it's but just that, weird. Yeah, that would pick, that would get buggies and all sorts in it, so that is good. I'll be keen to see when we get in, though, if that's compromised the back space. seat space, though, because everything comes at a cost, doesn't it, quite just frankly? Just consulting my iPad. 632 litre boot. With, oh, yeah. With 62 litres of underfloor additional space. There's a nice little leather loop here, look. Now, in this instance, you've got the optional spare wheel, but if you didn't, that would be an extra bit of stowage for contraband or... And if you don't spec the wheel, you don't get the wheel. Well, most... It doesn't just come as standard. Most cars now, you don't have to option a spare wheel. A spare wheel. It's absurd, I know. That is ridiculous. Well, look at you with the Jimny. The Jimny is a car that basically has no boot, but because you like the Jimny enough, you're willing to live with it. This is, not, a, this is a. This is a supercar SUV. Yeah. So it's obviously compromised, but actually they've done a really good job of that. I was just saying the KN, what, how big is this boot again? 632 litres. Yes, so, so this is a, a, almost as big as a KN boot, and the KN is a taller car. Well, and as we all know, you love the KN. Is it not Cayenne? I think it's Cayenne. Do you I know what? The first generation Cayenne is probably the, one of the worst looking modern cars of our time. You hate it. That's a very interesting way to carry a rucksack on a bike, right. rather than just putting it on your back. He can hear you. No, he, he can. can. He's texting now. Well, He'll I'm, I'm going to get into the boot. Oh yeah. Because people like you getting into the Do boot, don't that? they? This is a leather. How do you get in? Look, it's fine. Ha flat floor entry. I've got to try and. How do you? Do you just normally just climb oh, yeah, in? I don't I'm let me get tell in. you how to do it. I mean, you shouldn't even be here, quite frankly. Uh. Right, I'm going to just get in. Uh, in a really ladylike way, like this. I feel like, like a magician's that. assistant. And then you, you just. Do you know what? I've never been in a boot of a car before. And then you just press this button <gasps> here. No, don't you dare! And then your wife disappears. <coughs> that's illegal because that's. Oh kidnapping. my god. I'm gonna die. Oh my god, it's awful. I've never been in the boot of a car before. Haven't you? I've been never. in the boot of a car into. Why? driven into town before because there was no other room in the car and it was oh, the old days. Oh god that was a bit, I mean you're not gonna, well I mean you could kidnap him. No they have anti-kidnap things if you pull that out there they, there'll be a fluorescent toggle because right. to sell in America really, okay. you have to have an anti-kidnap boot. Oh pull. hang on there were some I buttons do know here, that. there's buttons here that do stuff. What does that do? Well that's to drop the seats automatically, watch. 
<gasps> oh, that's nice, isn't it? Practicality. Yeah. James Bond does family shizzle. Yeah. You could have told me that before I got in the boot. And then I could have shimmied out. Do you want to get in the boot as well? Um, no? Yeah, but I'll, I need to sing a song to distract me. Like a James Bond song. What song? Oh God, I nearly just said the Sam Smith one then. That's driving me mad. It's something about... Um, tomorrow, no, Never Dies, no. No, Tomorrow Never Dies was Cheryl Crow. Yeah. That was a good song. James, that was it's Piers about Brosnan's dying, though, isn't it? Or it's always about no dying. No Time to Die. No, that's Billie Eilish, isn't it? I have a, okay. What about, like, I've simply not got the time to die today? Well, or he just doesn't die. Just don't die now. Ever. By James or Bond. Or is he going to die? I mean, that's the thing. Stop dying. Or just die. <laughs> <laughs> I love all these James Bond the The, the, the infamous theme tune, Just Die. You see, I'm actually going to be nice and say to you, I'm going to shut that. This is easy. Is I, that I've, okay if I shut it? Yeah, I'm not bothered. I've been in loads of boots. Okay. For like 20 minutes at a time. That's when it gets freaky. Trust me. Hang on, I've just locked it. Sorry. Is that a tractor going by? That is a bit freaky when you hear a tractor. Right. So, first impressions. Because Aston Martin claim that this cockpit, I mean, silly name, but this cockpit will, is designed to fit any driver and already it doesn't. It just doesn't. The, I don't like cars with centre bits here because I'm a woman and it's never the right height. So that means I've got to pump the seat really high up because I don't think women have that long a torso. So I always find them really too high and then a bit restrictive. Also breasts. You know, we've got breasts here, so you can get a bit in the way of breasts. But they feel a bit wispy. They feel a bit wispy, I'm not going to lie. Okay, I've got to put the window up because Johnny will moan at me for wind noise. Not that kind of wind noise. Okay, so start. Kind of sounds cool. I'm going to put the window up. And this one up yeah probably better put that one up so all of the buttons are here i mean it's i mean it is literally kind of like p r n d that's quite basic normally it's down here but it's over there it's okay that's fine i'm not going to judge i think it's a bit rubbish though so there we go i've slightly adjusted off camera which will just again really irritate johnny the steering wheel and i moved it up a bit i think and out a bit. My gosh, I'm like sweating. But if I put the air con in, it'll probably be noisy and then he'll really tell me off. He's honestly so mean. Really bad husband, like mean. So the stitching is apparently, or the contrast stitching is optional. I think most people would probably go for it though. I might be wrong, because um, it's sort of color matching. It's all hand stitched apparently that's an Aston Martin thing. They like hand stitching. I guess it's quite old school, it's quite British. Kind of old school British industry stitching. Um, smell wise, it just smells like a new car. Johnny said to me, he said, talk about the smell. It just smells like a new car. I mean, it smells leathery, it smells nice. Does it smell plasticky at all? So it smells well made, um, natural substances. Um, yeah, it's nice. Right, this is the bit where I meant to tell you all about the car in a really charismatic and animated way, apparently. So I'll do my best. Right, so this is Aston's all-wheel drive V8 twin turbo vehicle, um, made completely out of aluminium, as we've already said. So it should be significantly lighter as a result. Its top speed is 181 miles an hour um, and it does 0 to 62 in four and a half seconds, which sounds pretty cool. Um, and I think that's quite comparable. I'm sure if Johnny was here, he'd tell you exactly how comparable that is with lots of other cars. Um, but. Sorry. 
Just heard you talking about 0 to 62s and stuff. Yeah. And um, actually, yeah, a lot of these cars that it competes with are four and a half seconds to 62. The Urus is quicker, the Lamborghini Urus, but the G63 G-Wagon, same four and a half to 62. The G-Wagon? This is more money than the G-Wagon by about 15 grand. And right. it's more money than the Bentayga. Okay, well, yeah. I'll, I'll try and mention that then. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, I think that's go. probably for the best. Sorry. It's actually quite a lot longer than the G-Wagon as well. Why? I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to find my notes. Right, now that he's gone, let's stack this car up against its rivals. So if you want to buy this car, its main competitors that you probably want to compare it against are the Bentley Bentayga, the Lamborghini Urus, um, obviously the Range Rover, always a favourite with the country set, definitely where we are anyway. The Maserati Levant Trofeo? Levante Trofeo. Levante Trofeo. Terrible writing. Um, the Mercedes G-Wagon AMG, I love that car. Um, obviously the Porsche Cayenne, which basically is, is kind of Porsche's equivalent of this and has and pretty much saved Porsche and gone on to fund many other cars. Um, and I think Aston are hoping that this car will do the same thing for them. Sorry. Yeah, basically this car, I think, can make or break Aston Martin. And as much as I hate the Cayenne, it's, it's a bit better than it used to be. But that car has been like the most successful car for Porsche. And really the money they get from the Cayenne funds all the interesting Porsches, yeah. 911s and all the special yeah, yeah. And that's how you've got to look at this. I hope this car sells to people because this means they can carry on making interesting sports car Aston Martins. I just... So this is their make or break? This is their make car. or break car, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I really believe that, yeah. So okay. it's a very important car. Is there any other competitors you want to mention before? Yeah, well... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there's a wild card. So yeah, you, what? The one that, if you're buying a car like this, clearly you want to do some, some like, I don't know, family practicality peacocking. And one car that people don't seem to consider is the Tesla Model X, ludicrous performance, which is faster than all the cars you've just mentioned. But it looks like a piece of shit. Yeah, but so does the Urus. The Urus looks I mean, like... it sounds like a piece of shit. Oh, it's an absolute I mean, phallus awful, of a car. It's an awful name. It's an absolute phallus mobile. But that's the thing. If, so the Tesla Model X is in this same category? Yeah, it's much cheaper. It's 101... It's 100, no, 100, you've written 100k. 100 yeah. grand. So the Range Rover SVR is 101, the Tesla... Yeah. So the Tesla Model X is the fastest car out of all of these, and it's the cheapest. But it looks crap. Yeah. But then I think most of the others look crap. I guess it's still got this, the brand kudos, though, isn't it? I mean, if you're buying these cars, you're buying them for... Mm. You're buying them to Peacock, aren't you? It's all about the... Peacock! I'm going. Okay, go. Yeah? All right. right. Yeah. Do you just want to drive it? What? You mean like what I do for a living? Yeah. If that's all right. I don't think I've really got a choice, have I? Well, you know. I'm driving past a Roman gypsy caravan. It couldn't be further from what I'm driving in. So what even is this thing? Well, the DBX is obviously late to the game for Aston Martin in terms of other SUVs, the ones we've talked about, but it's a really crucial car for them. You know, the Porsche Cayenne has been out for years and it's been a huge success story for them. And it was very controversial when it came out. And I still find it hard to kind of accept as a product of like, why would you want to own a car like this? However, I do accept it as a business case on paper. And that's what, and that's what this car is. It is a business case. So there's different modes, five, six modes four um, road driving modes and two off-roading modes and you've got some 
off-road specific bits on these buttons down here on the collar. It's lovely, kind of wood veneer, um, plinth. So the modes are GT, which is what it tends to default to, individual. Then I've got Sport and Sport Plus. Sport you get extra throttle response, stiffer suspension. It's got air suspension, this thing. And it can be adjustable up to 95 millimetres, so what, nine and a half centimetres? Up or down, it'll wade through up to half a metre of water. You can manually adjust the air suspension uh, here. But it's got 48 volt responsive suspension and it can uh, uncouple the anti-roll bars like the Bentayga actually um, when it goes off-road so that it can get extra axle articulation. Now all this is pretty cool I guess but I suppose it it's trying to be a, a master of all trades and my main issue with SUVs is they just can't be they can't be the master of all trades because they're heavy because there's loads of luxury in here and even when it's made of aluminium it's still heavy and it can't be efficient because it's big and it's heavy and they're all petrol unless you bought the uh, you know the diesel Bentayga or the the, the hybrid which is a bit token and the top ranking Cayenne Turbo S E hybrid is still you know a token eco vehicle so you, who buys them what are you looking for it's peacocking with a bit of practicality or is it like like chops thinks is it like the guy that used to have the the you know the two door coupe and has had to get a bit more practical I just don't know. So we've got these big aluminium ears for the uh, the paddle shift, nine speed auto. Most of them tend to be seven or eight. And while I'm weaving through town just to get on the open road, it's worth mentioning that that is a beautiful key. And what Aston do do very well is attention to detail on the, the furnishings and the tactile stuff. It's even got, that's a rubberized little key pocket to put it in. Whereas you can stick it in a hole in some of the, the sports cars. And there's this like kind of pie crust stitching on the steel. I like the cabin. I think the cabin's very beautiful actually. It's well appointed. It's, um, it's up there with, with the Bentley Bentayga, which is a car that's wonderful to sit in, but you have to get out and look at it. And this is a prettier car than the Bentayga and the Urus, certainly. And people are looking at it, obviously, because it's they're double taking. They're going, well, it's definitely an Aston Martin because that front is unashamedly Aston. But what's going on? What is it? I think Aston have done a, definitely done a better job than Bentley visually and Lamborghini because the Urus just doesn't work. It just doesn't work, especially the back doors. They're awful. Whereas these are integrated quite well. And the other thing is, when I got into the DBX for the first time what I was greeted with was both front and rear actually really large open uh, apertures with a with a flat sill so it felt welcoming and it felt spacious it does feel very spacious panoramic roof um, as standard which I think that happens quite that's pretty common now it's weird to think you know like, what's the relevance of a car like this because like if this was a two-door DB11 or you know a sports car, it would be an occasional use car. You might use it in the summer, then put it away, and you'd have something else. And all I keep thinking about with these high-powered SUVs is exactly that. Why try and wrap it all up in one package? When if you've got this kind of money, you just have two cars. I'd rather have an RS6 Avant or an E63 AMG Estate that would do family duties. It's more subtle looking, but maybe for the more discerning person, I think it's faster and cheaper. And then I'd have a chunk of money to spend on a weekend thing, if I so wished, which could be an Aston Martin Vantage, a used one, 
a good used one too. What's quite surprising about the DBX is its level of practicality. You'd expect it to be much more compromised compared to a lot of its peers, but it's got a whacking great boot. It's got very deep footwells, five seater, not four. Um, but it is expensive, like like more than a G wagon expensive, uh, more than the top end KN Turbo E hybrid as much as a Urus, more than a Bentayga, more than the, the proper unicorn, the Maserati Levante Trofeo. So I mean, oh, I've got a Ferrari California behind me. If I slip it into Sports Plus, that then goes to track mode and turns traction control off. So that's the most hardcore mode. Four litre twin turbo V8. Finally, Aston have decided to buy engines off people that can make them better and cheaper, like AMG, which is a good idea. Feels like you've got too many gears actually in this. Feels like nine is, is not quite required. guy in the Ferrari's right behind me. I mean, let's face it, you buy a car like this to Peacock, but is it the best, most tasteful way to Peacock? I just don't think so. Well, while I'm just dicking around on a farm for no apparent reason and a DBX, here's what I think. I think they've done a very, very good job and I hope that I'm wrong here, but I do think that it's perhaps a bit late to a party that's already getting close to becoming outlawed and maybe frowned upon by society. A huge, heavy, massive piston-engined thing. I just don't know. I mean, I think if you want teenager kudos and sheer speed, you'd probably go for a Tesla Model X. If you want utter reliability and cheaper, faster firepower, you'd get a KN Turbo S e-hybrid. If you want antique-like residuals, maybe you get a Merc G-Wagon, G63. Well, I would. Yeah, okay. But you won't let me. <laughs> no, we can't afford one, but that's besides the point. But remember, if you're looking to buy a car like this, please always try the alternatives before you commit. And also think hard about why you would want to buy a car like this. Is it better than, say, a luxurious estate for the week, for the days of the week and a sports coupe for the weekend? Are you ever going to go off-road in a car like this? No. No. And are you ever going to tow like this? 